Got, we got a lot of light on this side. Hey, Yo, what's, what's up? up? What's going on, everybody? This is your boy Mick from Mick on the Move, live with everybody's favorite co host, Kisa Baby. Kisa Baby. Y'all be here tonight. Yeah, the squad is deep. The squad we is deep. deep. That's what we do. <laughs> Yes. All deep, y'all. Tonight we're gonna be kicking off the series "Black Women Stop Dating Till You Done the Work to Heal Yourselves." All right, y'all excited about this topic tonight? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a dope ass topic. It's it a dope is. series, y'all. It it's is. a dope yeah, series. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> before we get started, we want to just introduce everybody. Uh, so we'll start from our from my left, and then we'll go all Say the way your name around. and where you know Nick or I from. Yeah, I'm Tia, and I know Nick from. Church growing up, it's my brother. That's right. That's right. Yes. That's right. That's right. All right. Same. Chanel. No Mick from church, and <laughs> he's my brother. Yeah. And Justin's godfather. Godfather uncle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Aww. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey y'all, I'm Hope the Creative. I know Kisa from Sula High School. Mm -hmm. No. I went to Morgan with you. Oh, Morgan. Oh, you like, where are you going? You're like, where are you going to school? I'm sorry. We went to Morgan. There'd be so many people. That's all good. That's all good. That's all good. And we, I don't know if you're over 40, but we're over 40. So that's. Yeah. Cool. Hope and I went to Morgan together. We okay. To Morgan. Okay. 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 Talk to Hope. All right. All right. What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> this Pooka ain't Dinks, y'all. This one's Pooka ain't Dinks. What's your name is? Dinks. I'm Tanya. Um, I know Kisa and Nick from school. I have also appeared on two shows. Prior. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. right. She's a native, y'all. She's a native. <laughs> we go back to elementary school, though. Oh, yes. for real? Yes. Kindergarten. Elementary. Yes. Yes. Oh. Way, way back. Back in the time. Yeah. 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 No. Etonics? Yeah. Which colors did y'all have? I had orange. I had orange and blue. Did you have the blue? I had purple. Y'all wear Etonics? Maybe. I don't know if she was Etonics. No. I had orange. I also didn't know what I had. And we know how Tanya feel about telling her age. I couldn't tell nobody we was class of 99, y'all. She's like, what? I'm 29. Oh, <laughs> All right, next on the couch, our next co host. I am Lisa. What's up, and Lisa? Lisa and Nick from Parkdale High School. That's yes. right, that's right, like class of 99, All deep back. up in this joint. Oh, that reunion. Yes. <laughs> True. My name is Shanita, and I know Mick um, as a friend of many, many years. Yes, 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 yes. And actually, mine went to Super. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, y'all. Uh, we're going to jump right. And then everybody's favorite co host, Kisa, baby. My name is Kisa. Kisa yeah. <laughs> and I know Mick from middle school. We met in eighth yes. grade. Yes. Kim and all these ladies already told you how I know them. Kim yes, Kim 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 So we, yes, I'm going to say, yes. I know Kisa. That's what I said. said. I was like, yeah, I know. Like, I knew Lisa from Kimmel. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> and then I told you, and I was like, Lisa live around Palm Park? That's why, because she went to Kimmel. Because you remember that. You said and she then, went to Kimmel. And you, and and you was like, no, Riverdale. But then, shoot, I got Riverdale roots, too. <laughs> for real, for real. Anyway. No, all good, y'all. Listen, we all excited, y'all. We are excited about the topic tonight. We're excited to get started. So before we get started, um, I just wanted to thank again all the ladies for coming out tonight. Thank you for the fellas for tuning in and supporting these ladies. Yep. Um, we we ask that you are attentive, you pay attention, you listen for understanding. Um, while these ladies let y'all know about their journey towards healing. All right. Yes. So you gonna go get us some drinks, right? I'm gonna go get y'all some drinks. Boom. Yeah, I'm the butler tonight. All right. right. And bartender and. Eric and the AB man, all, right. all that. Peace, y'all. All right, ladies. Oh, I'm so oh, excited. What's up? I just wanted this on the table over there. Oh, thank you so much. No problem. No problem. All right. I'm so happy y'all here. Let's move this. All right, ladies. So y'all were thinking about our uh, first set of questions. Let's get them talking. Hey. <laughs> all right. So let's just go on and jump right on in. Okay. So. Our first question is, who or what 
And when I say what, I don't mean like what, you know what I mean? But I mean like descriptive or adjectives, what. Who or what um, were you as a little girl? Who were you as a child? Anybody want to go first? Okay. Go ahead, Lisa. Okay. okay. I would say um, I was a curious little child. Just very curious. Um, always hung around my older sisters or everybody was older than me. I okay. Was a baby. So mm -hmm. I was just always curious to what was going on, why I couldn't get into it. I'm going to find a way to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I'm going to have fun like the older people. Yep. So. They like having you around? Yes. They did. Yes. yes. And now everybody think I'm the oldest. Because <laughs> you're wiser. You're wiser. That's why. Nip, I think you should go ahead and get it. Anybody else want to share who you were as a little girl? Go ahead. Nippy. Nippy's trying to get in the shower. It's okay. She's like, I'm a girl too. I'm a puppy. I was. <laughs> um, but as a little girl, I would say I was, I didn't really know where I fit. I had a lot of cousins. Um, I didn't have any sisters on my mom's side. I had two younger brothers. Um, but I too was curious, but they called me like, um, Renee Poussaint, the, the news reporter, because I would see everything and tell everything. Oh, goodness. <laughs> that part. Yes, yeah, so I was, that was me. I was a little hot, but, um, <laughs> I, I feel like I wanted to do a lot of things that I saw people like that were older than me. My godmother, she was a yeah. cosmetologist. So I wanted to do that and things that I was interested in. Nippy. As a child, oh, I find can. that I'm still still have those interests now, like with children and birth. Um, but I was just an inquisitive child. I felt like I was, you know, maybe odd or didn't always fit in. Right. Yes, yeah, so I, I had it. to grow in it, grow into as a kid. Right. This side of the couch. Listen, I just always felt like I was that different little child. Like I'm wanting to do things or understand things in a way other people weren't. And my parents were a little older when they had me, so it was kind of like. I'm being raised by the the wise people. Right, <laughs> you right. know, they kind of already settled in life, but I don't know. It's just, I was that child who my mother said that when I was in kindergarten, they weren't going to pass me to the first grade. And they were like, she doesn't talk. She doesn't interact with other people. But my mother was like, but how are her grades though? Is she excelling? They were like, yeah. My mother's like, listen, we're going to work on her over the summer. Yeah. Like, it's okay. Yeah. Maybe. Every time after that, all the teachers like, your child talks too much. <laughs> That's literally me. But it's kind of like, listen, I just kind of do things in my own time. And shoot, I'm different. Hey. <laughs> and then that list. That's right. That's right. Um, I was very shy as a kid. Um, It was... I kind of kept to myself. My mother was... I was part of a military family. Okay. So my dad was gone a lot. Um, and my, I had a baby sister, but we were years apart. So it kind of okay. was like that awkward kind of relationship that we had going on. But I was very shy, but I also would like to explore different Come things. On. It was like I knew something was better than what it, mm -hmm. what it was in front of me. So I always kind of wanted to do more. Gotcha. Um, but yeah. See if you can, Shanita, I don't want to cut you out. Oh, we can try to make some room on the couch. This is Shanita. Hi. <laughs> Hi. So I know you had. It's all right, baby. We was just actually just got on the first question. So everybody, I'll just introduce. This is Shanita. So this is Shanita. You know Lisa. You know Tanya. This is Hope, mm. Chanel, and Tia. Shanita knows Nick and I from high school, but I met her in Middle school, we didn't go to the same middle school, but we shared a long time friend. And she know Tanya, and she know Lisa, you know, yeah, from, yeah. All right, so we was just, okay, go ahead. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I know, especially with Nippy running around. Oh, now she in her cage. She funny. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna come in and out the cage as I feel. Yeah. Um, we was just talking, Shanita, about who we were as, as little girls. So I can say, Shanita, I, re I resonate with you on telling stuff so i always thought the adults had like the more interesting conversation so i wasn't at no little kids table mm -hmm. if i was sitting there my ears and eyes mm -hmm. were on everything they was doing yes. and it was funny because when i was younger they kept saying stay in the child's place stay in the child's place but when they started realizing i was picking up on stuff 
Everybody wanted me around. I asked you, did they want you around? Everybody wanted me around because I had the tea. But I knew how I started to learn how to like not tell like you know every single thing. But I I I did. I used to I used to say it. I when I was a kid, I used to say it out loud. You know what I'm saying? So thank you. So then uh but I had a I had a god sister who like took me with her everywhere. She was probably I was probably like 10, she was probably like 22. You know what I'm saying? And she took me to see Coming to America like nine times. That's my favorite movie. It's my favorite movie of all time. But like I was that little girl. I was always wiser. And my mother's friends used to be like, she's so she has a strong will and she's so wise. My mother also kind of like raised me to be expressive because she couldn't express herself as a little girl. So she was like, when I have a kid, I'm not going to hold my kid back on talking or speaking their mind, but she had me. So I'm already, I came out expressive. So her just letting me, you know, so I just, I, but I have learned to, you know, tone down my delivery. But I was definitely that little girl who I picked up on everything. I observed stuff. You wasn't clamming for no food. You just, I was sharp. I was sharp as a tack. You know what I'm saying? And my parents, my parents had me young. They were 20 when they had, they weren't even, my mother wasn't even 20 yet. And my father turned 20, like a couple weeks before I was born. But my parents have always been really close. Like they, they weren't, they, they weren't together where I remember, but my families, you would thought my parents were married because my families are so close. You know what I'm saying? So I grew up with them being friends. I've always seen them cordial. I had never seen them fighting over me or nothing like that. So I just kind of grew up where I didn't have that kind of, I guess, stress in a way like some kids or, you know, kids even today, I guess. But my parents are always cordial and cool and, and friends. And to this day, they're friends. So I kind of grew up with them being chill. So I was able to kind of be a little girl, but, and, I was, and I'm the only child too. So that's that that part. Tanya. <laughs> it's okay, if you know, you know, you don't have to. Or you can come back to you later. Yeah, we can come back to me later. Shanae, you want to share? I know you didn't have a check. Well, I guess we you didn't have a check. I'm gonna say write a question Uh who are you as a little girl? What were you as a little girl? So as a little girl, I probably was the little girl that was too grown. Um, I pretty much hung out with my older sister and my cousin, who's like four and a half, five years older than me. So basically, my mother worked, so they had to take me everywhere they went. So mm -hmm. I was pretty much everywhere they went. Mm -hmm. So when I say everywhere, I mean everywhere. <laughs> so, you know, I think for me, being with my sister and my cousin majority of the time, kind of made me be a little bit more old on the when I say too grown side or right. just grow up a little experiencing faster experiencing things and growing up a little faster than I probably normally would if I didn't have to be them all the time. I think I share like, like the same experience. Yeah. 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 Because I mean they was going over their boyfriend house. They had to babysit me. I had to sit there too. So I mean, you know, you know, I'm gonna get me a boyfriend. Me, uh -huh. so, I'm gonna get me one too. Like, um, I guess me as a little girl, I kind of grew up a little fast, but I've kind of always been my own person. Yeah, I have always did what I wanted to do. Um, I was considered as bad, um, bad in school. Um, you know, because I'm a teacher, and stuff like that. Like, I just, oh my, <laughs> Lord, Lord, Lord. Lord. I'm gonna leave it. I mean, my mother used to, I'm gonna lose my job because I stayed in trouble. Basically. You know who she the grandma is? Oh, yes. Oh, you yes, do. I yes. Yes. She's like, yes, 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 I do. And my grandmother was a, um, what she was, what was she a math teacher? Fifth grade. Yeah, fifth grade. Fifth grade. Mm -hmm. Fifth grade. Mm -hmm. At New Coast. Yes, oh, honey, and a lot of my friends. Hey, no, Miss Mitchell ain't nobody. You ain't. I ain't gonna be in her class, but she was sweet right. to me. But I ain't gonna be in her class. She, she was, was, she was me. Mm -hmm. She was me. Ain't nobody. Not to me. Ain't not, not to me. But, but any, ain't nobody. Any of my her. friends that I know that was like Miss Mitchell, your grandma. Oh no, <laughs> she ain't played no, no games. She was alright with me, but she was mean as hell. Yeah, lie. yeah. But her <laughs> class yeah. was quiet. Everybody, well, hey, yes. Don't ain't nobody trying. Her. She's ninety-two now. She still. She yes, still I know. Let me tell you, she still got a mouth and she still say. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Miss Mitchell was everything. So, and then my grandma was in the cafeteria. My grandma was a cafeteria lady. So I feel like growing up, I just I don't know. I've always been. I've always had my own personality. 
I always just did what I wanted to do. My mother said, don't do, I did. Don't go, I went. I did the opposite of everything they told me to do. I hear you. <laughs> I was also <laughs> like the chocolate girl. They like to be outside, so she turned purple. My mother used to get mm-hmm. so mad at me for being outside, like till I got like super dark. <laughs> She'd be like, "Kissy, you gotta protect your skin." But I will say, I was a little chocolate girl at a time with light skin girls. We what? We wasn't. We wasn't in. So all the boys was my friend, and you know they. We 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 we, 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 had, we was friends like behind the desk and stuff like that. Oh, I like you. I used to have like three boyfriends though. Then nobody know. <laughs> No but, but I'm just saying, and I was also, and my, my babysitter used to be the type like she picked on your, uh, she picked on like your, whatever your issue was. That's mm-hmm. she she would she would nickname you that. Mm-hmm. So I was piggy because I was, I wasn't like a mess, but I was a little thickums or whatever, and I was chocolate. So she called me piggy, but I like piggy actually. It's I think I think it's cute, and I know girls named piggy, and I love that name. But anyway, uh, and Miss Piggy was fly. Miss Piggy was Miss fly, Piggy was fly. and she had turned it. She the only one who had a boyfriend. Ain't nobody had a husband. But no, but um, yeah. If you was a crybaby, you was a crybaby. If you boo boo on yourself, your name poo poo. If you pee on yourself, oh you stupid, your name dumb dumb. Like yeah, I know, right? But I love me some Miss Thomas. Tom can't stand her, but I love me. Oh, God bless her soul. She passed a couple years ago. But I love Miss Thomas because she, I like I said, but I was a little tough. So and that's another thing about it, like our. As we were kids, who was around us, who was influencing us, what could we stand like or do with? So you were able to say, Well, shoot, Miss Piggy Fly, but then the other people who are like, Nah, yeah. you call me Piggy, and now I've crumbled to the ground, yeah. and it's just like, yeah. and I'm sure at she first did. it wasn't, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? But, it, but that's what she did to everybody, so mm-hmm. I didn't feel like she was discriminating, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It, everybody had a nickname <laughs> based on whatever your issue was. <laughs> that's bad. That that's bad. Yeah. I mean, and those names have stuck. Like we call each other that from our baby because we all we went to elementary school together and stuff like that too. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I just wanted to share that with y'all because I was definitely a little chocolate thick. I'm saying, <laughs> yeah. And my nickname was Piggy at the uh, basis. <laughs> <laughs> so, what else? What else? Um, there was something else I was going to say. Uh, it'll come back to me. But um. All right, so we can move on. You know, if we can come back, we can do whatever y'all want to do. Um, so, I, so number two is, how has your childhood strengthened you? And keeping in mind, the next one is, how has it enabled you or may have um, hindered you? But how has it strengthened you? Good, bad, ugly, or indifferent, whatever you think it is. You know what I mean? Because there's some of us that... Your mother might have worked a lot, you know what I'm saying? Your daddy might have been home. He might not have been home. So you might have been able to, you had to come home by yourself. You might have to take care of a sibling or something like that. So sometimes you you might have grown up a little bit faster because you had like more responsibility because for whatever reason, you know what I'm saying? So how has your childhood strengthened you? So I'll say, um, for me, like I was saying, as a child, I didn't really know what I fit in. It strength that has it strengthened me to have a voice and know who I am, exactly who I am as an adult. And even realizing that those are people, my family, cousins, whoever, um, those are people that we were forced to be around. And oh, no. now realizing that, you know, you can make decisions on who you choose to be with or you even choosing your family at this age it's very important that's where i found my strength um and it also has strengthened me because as a child um i didn't i wasn't always with my mother so now i am trying to strengthen a relationship with my mother as to find a place with her and it not feel so um scattered like i did when i was a child and this comes from doing inner child work you know, like it takes for you to have those tough conversations with your mother just because they had that title doesn't mean that they nurtured you or, you know, mm-hmm. cared for you in a way or loved you even. Um, so it's a lot of things that I find strength in as an adult that little Shanita didn't have or she didn't have the voice or she just went with the flow or was over this person's house or that person's house mm-hmm. and having to fit in with what they like and do what they did. Gotcha. So now it's more so... Um, me just having that voice to be able to say, I don't like that. I'm not going there. 
I don't fuck with them. You know, like mm-hmm. it's 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 having strength when I didn't have strength, and that's giving the inner <laughs> me, the inner child, that strength that she didn't have. Um, a lot of my childhood, I really suppressed, and I didn't remember it for years. Like I will always be around my siblings or my cousins and be like, I don't remember that, or was I there? Because I really didn't remember it. Oh. And it wasn't until last year um, when I started to chant and do a lot of internal work that I started to have visions of my childhood. Mm. And when these visions came back, I realized why I suppressed my childhood. Mm. It was molestation. It was, you know, a lot of things that I would not have thought that I went through as a child. As a, my grandfather was a bishop. My grandmother was an evangelist, you know, so I went with the flow. I was in church most of the time. So what could have been wrong about my childhood? But when I started to do the inner child work and reflect on the weaknesses that were there, and it wasn't always perfect, you know, I started to really um, get what I was looking for. That I started to suppress the memories that I didn't have as an adult, you know. So I found that my childhood is scattered and discombobulated as I feel like it was. It strengthened me now to be able to give that little girl, you know, the voice that she didn't have or the placement that she didn't have. Right. The Good word. for you, Shanita. Thank you. Good for you because that's what's up. Number one, you know, that those inner childhood traumas or that inner childhood wound, they run deep. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't imagine not remembering stuff like that. So for you to for you to be able to dig into that and tap into that. And then not only that, because I always feel like our weaknesses are really our superpower, but we got to do the work. When you don't do the work, you think that your weaknesses are, you just focus on them and you operate out of a place of fear all the time, right? But once you start to realize that, once you admit it, then you can start to change it. And when you start changing, you really realize that like, this is what I'm supposed, this is this this was preparing me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. That's good work. Mm-hmm. That was deep work. It was hard. That's good work. It was hard work because it got to the point where I stopped saying, oh, I don't remember and just brushing it off to this is a problem that yeah. I don't remember. Wow. You know, why don't I remember when I was seven, eight, nine? You know, six you pushed years old. It down. What do you think? You I put- suppressed it. Wow. I didn't want to remember that. Wow. wow. I never ever wanted to remember that. And then when I saw it, it was crystal clear and I remembered it so clear, it was just like, oh shit, this was my child. I hated everybody around me. Wow. My grandmother, my mother, I hated everybody. <laughs> and it was so crazy that I had to now come to a place where if I would have known this all these years, you know, or does it now change how I feel about the person without knowing it? It was some it was some healing to do, but yeah. When you said you were moving around, I heard molestation. And I didn't want to ask that, but I swear as soon as you said moving around and Cause it, cause it's, it's like your foundation is, mm-hmm. it's not solid, mm-hmm. and so, and people prey on that, unfortunately. Yeah, yep. the vulnerable one. Yep. Mm-hmm. Wow. Good for you. I'm proud of you. That's inspiring. Thank you. Yes. How else has our childhood strengthened us? I would say, um, it strengthened me as far as, like I said, I was always with my siblings and with the older people all the time because my mother worked three jobs. So by my mother working the three jobs, I would say it strengthened me because now I have the, the struggle. I mean, like the grinding in me. I have the grind. Like if I know I want something, I'm like mentally put it in my head. Okay, I can't do this. I can't do that. I have to sacrifice. No eating out. No hanging out. I got to grind. And what I love about that, what strengthened me at this point in my life is I see a lot of um, younger generation don't have that. Yeah, that hustle is not there. Um, Very they true. don't have that hustle. That hustle is they don't have right. that grind. And I'm just thankful that I had a mother that taught me and showed me that even in the times when you don't have as much as others have that you're still able and mm-hmm. you can still move about mm-hmm. and people don't even know you struggling. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I'm thankful for that and these times in my life. Right. That's yeah. what's up. Yeah, I can resonate with that. My mother worked two and three jobs. So my aunt was, I was also with my aunt. My aunt would pick us up from the babysitter. So me and my little cousin, we were, we were first cousins. We were like brother and sister. We were two years apart. Our mothers were a year apart. 
And so I was always with my aunt. But it was crazy because my aunt, my aunt ended up, like me being around her, she ended up becoming an addict, like when I was probably about 10, about 19 years old. But I'm actually thankful that I got to experience that because I used to go to her meetings with her. <laughs> I used to go to her NA meetings with her. And I loved it. I, I loved it. So, like, I learned a lot. I learned 12 steps. <laughs> I, liked the, I liked the testimonies. I loved it. I did. I mean, it, my, and my auntie's clean. She, you know, she's been clean for over. She's probably been clean for 20 years now. Um, but just saying, like, I, being around her a lot. We was always with my little cousin's father's side of the family. You know what I'm saying? They was they were wild, but they was cool. They, everybody looked out for each other. They were family. But that kind of, you know, my mother, my mother grind. But it, you would think I still spent time with her. It wasn't like I felt like she was always like gone. She still, she was still around. But like Monday through Friday, when she get off her full-time job, she going to her part-time. My aunt got me and we good. She know that. When she get home, I'm in the house. But I, I definitely got that my mother grind. I mean, to this day, she's still. She's still a hustler. I definitely got that from my mom as well. She, I don't know how she did it half the time, but um, she took care of us. My dad was gone. He was in the military. So, I mean, we were in the military. So, I, it never seemed like we were struggling. But later on, when I got older, she, you know, told me stories. And I'm like, I don't, I didn't experience that. Um but she was always the type to kind of keep kids out of adult affairs. She used to say that all the time. Um, and so we just, she took care of it. So I didn't know what that looked like. And then when I got older, it hindered me because I didn't know how to like um, register my car. I didn't know the basics. I mean, I knew how to like take care of a house, but outside of the house, she took care of all of that for me. So I had no, I was like, oblivious mm -hmm. to real life situations and on one hand it was a blessing because i didn't experience some of those things and i'm sure i had trauma and when i think about it shanita shanita was saying there's some parts of my childhood that i still don't remember as well so um i'm gonna have to circle back and do yeah. the, the childhood work for that yeah. but um Okay, <laughs> that's really good. Okay, I'm gonna have to get with you with that. But for the most part, I had a fairly decent childhood, you know, and I learned a lot from the the grind, and I learned a lot from just kind of taking care of myself. And in some regards, it's like a catch twenty two. I really have a hard time relinquishing things as far as control of my life and things I want to do and my kids and blah blah blah. It's like I hold it really tightly. Um, and my mom always used to say, like, don't depend on the man to, you know, do all this. And she had a husband. <laughs> so I was like, wait, what? But he wasn't there. So it was like some of the physical stuff that she had to do or get someone to do or pay or whatever. She just, she took care of it. Like she just took care of everything. And I think that's kind of been my demise in this healing process because, it's kind of hard for me to relinquish some of that that I feel like I have control over, but I really don't. So it's an illusion. Yeah. <laughs> Good for um, you, though. So I think my childhood is starting to, like, surface some things. And I'm, I'm glad about it because you don't know. You can't deal with it. You can't address it. You yeah. can't heal from it. So I'm grateful in that regard. But, yes, it's hard. <laughs> it's work. I will say that. It's definitely hard. But it is worth it. Um, and I just feel like every day you just continue to grow and, you know, let go of some of those things that you had no control over as a child. I mean, yeah, we can you, you know, you didn't ask to be here type thing. I was having a conversation with my daughter um, the other day and she was saying how, you know, um, parents cause trauma. And I was like, <laughs> every like, child in America has some level or in the world has some level of trauma Absolutely. because parents half the time don't know what the they're doing. They're humans. You know? They are <laughs> human beings. Like, and my mom used to always tell me, you didn't come with a manual. Mm -hmm. And I told my daughter the other day, I was like, I'm sorry that I came home from work and was frustrated and didn't reference page 26 of the parent <laughs> handbook. <laughs> I, I didn't know. Like, you know, so I kind of deal with it as you kind of go along. I mean, and you learn, and then you, like we were talking about earlier, you just do better, you know? 
and that's all you can do. So. No, I feel you on that. Y'all, isn't it interesting how your parents sometimes can keep stuff from you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You be like, yeah. how you do that? Yeah. Like, it is, I will say, honestly, it's a blessing for some children because you don't, you can be a child in a true, way. True. You know what I'm saying? So I can understand how as you get older, it might be like, well, damn, I don't even know how to do this. But then it's like some of us who may have watched our parents struggle, you know what I'm saying, and be like, damn, every problem is her problem. Every problem she got is my problem, too. You know what I'm saying? That was me. Right. Right. That was me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What you got, Shanae? You like, listen, if mom I mean, is going say, through it, we going through it. My childhood, and like things that strengthened me, like my mother was a single mother. It was just me, her, and my sister. When I say she worked, like what I need move got up from, just a little okay. bit, like so, come straight forward. No, no, no. This, this way towards me. You go, yeah. You, it, it, you gonna look like you in front of them, but you. I just gotta. We gotta make sure you on the screen. Can you, I don't know. Oh, you might have to turn. That's good. Turn. 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 Just the, there you yeah. Go. yeah. Okay. So my mother was a single mother, and I could say what strengthened me is that I seen her take care of me and my sister. She worked hard. Like as a mother now, it's like you got to go to work. You got to have a job. You got to take care of your kids. <laughs> That's it. That's all. It's all on you. So I watched her, you know, struggle and take care of me and my sisters. And when I say it strengthened me. It was just kind of like I again grew up fast Mm -hmm. being with everybody that was older than me. But I feel like it also kind of put me in a perspective of I knew how to do, you know, like cooking. Mm -hmm. I was cooking early. (laughs) My mother had me in the kitchen. Oh, we making a potato salad. We doing this. We doing that. So, you know, some some if your parents didn't show you that when you were younger, when you get older, you don't know how to make certain things or do certain things. Mm -hmm. But my mother, like she kept us in the kitchen cleaning. So it's like, you know, as a child, why I got to clean? Why I got to do the dishes? Why I got to do this? But when you get older, you appreciate those things because now when my kids like, clean your room. Do something. Do something. Do something in the city. Right. Okay? Yeah. So my, I mean, like, because at my age, I had chores. My chores was my listen. <laughs> but I also was the youngest and I was four. So my sister, I would say, had a little bit harder than me. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of like a brat. And my, I feel like my she mother, got a cool older sister. I, love I, feel like, money. I feel like my mother, my sister, pretty much raised me because my mother was at work all the time. Mm-hmm. But I also feel like for me, I got away with a lot. Mm-hmm. My sister didn't get away with a lot. Oh, my mother said you punished. I'll be outside thirty minutes later mm-hmm. with my sister. She was hard on her, but she wasn't as hard on me. I get in Baby. trouble in school. Mm-hmm. I stayed in trouble in school. I always heard growing up. She need a man. She need to don't do this. She need to do this. She need to do this. My entire life, it was always kind of like, I would say, negative things. As a kid, when you're hearing that, you know, you're not doing anything right. But I also can say that strengthened me because it's like, I'm like, my skin is tough. It's not too much that people can say to me that's really going to bother me. Because I have always, I'm talking about seven years old, I was doing what I wanted to do. <laughs> so I would say that's what strengthened me. Although, when I look back at it now, that's trauma. Right. That yeah. was trauma. You telling me all the time, all you do is get in trouble in school. You always fight. You always doing this. But again, when you look at it, when you get up, like, man, that was trauma. Yeah. But then when you start to be an adult and you're interacting with other people and stuff, you're scared. You, can't, you can't break that barrier. That's good. Yep. I like that. I mean, I'm still working on breaking the barrier, but it's hard. I like it. <laughs> I think especially being told by those things by the ones you love. So, yeah. It mm-hmm. makes yeah. you even stronger. Mm-hmm. Like you said, what? I don't even care about you. So no, you that, that. yeah. That's what that get that that just provided mm-hmm. some understanding. And I I can understand what you're saying. You know, what I I'm mean it, it really wasn't. I was I wouldn't say evil as a kid, but I kind of was evil. So like I would get beatings, but I wouldn't cross it, she left the room. Mm. Oh. Yeah, I would take it. You wasn't giving her a satisfaction. I would not. You like you? Oh, you I'm not <laughs> make me cry. I would not. I would, you would not. I would not. She be me up, flinching. But I wouldn't. I would not drop a tear till she left the room. Wow. I wish. And my sister used to be like, "You was crazy. You was crazy." <laughs> crazy. She still say I'm crazy. But she be like, "You was crazy." But I, I don't know. And but again, like now, I look at it like maybe that's why I'm so hard and harsh now. 
You over me. here talking about yourself, boo. You being I know, and vulnerable. I didn't even, even do that. Look, I'm I proud of you. <laughs> but I'm hard you. on my kids because that's how I grew up. Mm-hmm. So I say all the time, like I'll say something like, "Look, you might have heard that from us. It's already there, right?" Yeah, because people won't hurt your feelings all your life. People yes. don't say things. Mm-hmm. Everybody's true. not going to give you, you know, saying. Oh, the, baby, the icing on the cake. The day, you know, what I'm saying all your life, you're going to hear things that may not be what you want to hear, or maybe negative or something. Yes. But I feel like, you know, for me, it conditioned me to. I, I, I was just going to say, speak on that. It was, it was. A subconscious reality that they was made for you, like that you didn't really create for yourself, which is probably why you were rejecting it as a child. But as you get older, you realize, like you said, that was trauma. That was trauma. And now you're able to find a balance or even find that softness that you, you know, that the, it's a divine masculine and feminine balance that we hey, get to. Talk about when we get to this uh, age in life, we realize we do have to have that masculine component to us, that toughness. Yes. But it's okay to be so in areas and find that balance. But it's it's crazy that our family, you know, put this image of us. Mm-hmm. This is who this person is, and right. we, we grow up thinking Ooh, that we have to operate girl. in that or be that tough. You know, yeah. have this thick skin or whatever. But yeah, it's it's good when we have that reality check. Like, oh, I do not have to be who they told me I was. Right. Yeah. You know that's funny. That because it reminds me. I remember I was at my babysitter's house. I had two friends. They was light skinned and they told me that. <laughs> Light skinned people was made out of uh, sand, and dark skinned people were made out of dirt. Oh, and they was my friends, right? Wow. And I was like, these bitches. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when I got my mother came to pick me up or whatever, and when I got in the back seat of the car, she was like, I started. I remember I started to cry, and she turned around. She was like, "What's wrong with you? I'm really light skinned." She turned. I was like, "What's wrong with you?" And I was like, "I told her what they said." She pulled that car over. She was like, "Kissy, you listen to me." She was like, "You are beautiful. Your skin is gorgeous, right?" But you don't. Know, at the time, you didn't, at those times, we didn't feel that way. You know what I'm saying? Because it was like I didn't. I I won't say that it broke me, but I do think it made me stronger mm-hmm. because I'm not easily offended by. I I'm gonna tell you where to go, how to get there too. I can dish it and take it. And that's you know what I'm saying. I can dish it and take it. So it's like you know, it's not a big deal. Like everybody's not going to be catering to how you feel all the time. So I I do think that that strengthened me. Like I said, my babysitter used to kind of pick on. Excuse me, certain things. You need some. But no, so I was, you know, my babysitter was kind of like, you know, I think that her making fun of our whatever our issue was kind of strengthened us in a way too. Because it was like people gonna say stuff, people gonna do stuff. And it wasn't until I was probably like in eighth grade where I actually like accepted my complexion and all of that. I, I had I had a family that loved on me with it too. It was the outside of my family. Everybody loved my chocolate skin at home. You know what I'm saying? But it was, you know, it's outside of that. So I I I feel you on, you know what I'm saying? Just kind of like I had a let me say this too. I had an uncle who my family used to be like, don't be around him by yourself. When you come in the house by yourself, close the door. Don't be in here with the door wide open. Cause if you pull up, he ain't the one you want to be with by yourself. I'm like, damn. The weird part, y'all, was that this uncle, I had the best relationship with. We had the longest conversations, but I would never be with him by myself. Never. My whole life would never be with him by myself. And it was crazy because he he had a temper. And I remember one time he, he went off and I was af- everybody was afraid of him. And I didn't even think. And I went over to him. He was tripping on with one of my aunts, his sister. And I went over to him and I pulled him off of her. He never, like, flinched to, like, do anything to me or anything like that. And I just felt like maybe it's different. You know what I'm saying? Maybe that's not what he, maybe he know he can't go there with me, but he did not bust the stitches out of his vest and everything pulling him off of her. And he just looked at me and just, he was, I could see in his face that he was blown that I saw him do that. And he just walked out the door. He didn't say nothing. He didn't touch me. He just walked out the door. So it was just kind of like, you know, I guess I always kind of felt like I was different. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, you know, I'm like, I can break that. I can break that spirit. Okay, what nobody say. But I didn't at the time. I didn't know that's what it was. But I feel like it's been happening my whole life. You know. How else has your your childhood strengthened you? Well, listen again. My parents, I, they were both in the household. Um, and they was real smart people. Really about <laughs> education, like right. 
pastors and doctors. It's just like, ah. <laughs> so they're always trying to just push my brother and I to just do things and be involved and stuff. So that was never really an issue. So I was, I was, I was always trying to go do it. It didn't take much. And even to the point where <laughs> when I was in elementary school, there was this play that was happening. And I wanted to audition for the role of the main character, but the main character was a little boy. But then all the kids in the classroom, you can't be that character. You're a girl. And I just, you know, was like, okay. You are yard. But, but but I just went on ahead and auditioned for something else because, I mean, they made me believe oh, I got that you. I couldn't, right? Yeah. But then i still be studying and learning his parts. And on the day of the show, you be mouthing this. P.S. stage, right? Oh. <laughs> so oh, who knows oh, that? Who knows that? Who knows that? Who knows that? And I did it. But it's kind of like, I mean, people will really try to get in your head. So like you're always pushing back against something. Yeah. Something. And so I think that was just kind of strengthening me all my life just to say, oh, y'all said I couldn't do it, but I'm going to do it. Uh, yeah. Who said? Who like, said what I are we can? talking about? So, you know. Listen, here we are. Don't tell me I can't. Challenge. Right, exactly. Yeah. So how do y'all think that your childhood may have enabled you or or hindered you? I know Chanel, you touched on it already a little bit, but if you, if you got more, of course. Mm -hmm. But I could mm. say I could say mine enabled me because it it basically now that I have kids, it showed me what not to do as a parent. Like, you got to pay attention more to your kids because with my childhood, it was like they didn't pay attention. And now that I have a, I had my daughter first, oh, it's crazy. And then, like, I just, I'm too old for time. Oh. So that's, that's, that's it for me. Yeah. So yeah. do you feel like you give her more protection than than you had? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But at least you recognize that. You know what I'm saying? And it's probably a good thing. Yeah. You know, it's probably a good thing. She probably like, dang, mommy. She mm -hmm. would be like that too. <laughs> <laughs> but you like, listen, I know stuff you don't know. Mm -hmm. You know. I can agree with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel you on that. And I think while I was strengthened, I was also like very much so sheltered. Mm -hmm. Right. I was right. I was playing there and so right. I was just right. Caucasian. Like, what are we doing? What are we talking about? <laughs> so then once I did get the suit, done, which I now realized you did not attend. Um <laughs> nope. I was like, what? People live in apartment buildings, they doing this, they doing that. I was just I was I didn't know. Right. That's how sheltered yeah. I was. But then it was like, oh, and now we're learning. Mm -hmm. Oh, yep. And that don't you feel good. Right. You've been cooking in the apartment with your boyfriend naked? Is this the... I'm the ninth grade listening like, oh my God. <laughs> the hell you doing that? My parents don't let me leave the block. And y'all... Okay. I'm you like, okay. Okay. Yeah, but you learn. You, mm -hmm. you live and you learn, you right? You live and you learn. Yeah. Tired. You all right? Yeah. You need another drink? Some tree drink? <laughs> yeah, I'm drinking in the water. This H2O. I'm always drinking. I know, right? How about that? I would say for me, how has my childhood hindered me? Whatever you want to say, whatever. Strengthen you? Nah, I'm still working through some issues. <laughs> I want to say, even though I grew up in a two parent home, and it's a lot of people like, how the hell do you have daddy issues? But trust me, girl. You still have that. Oh, yes, I be trying to tell my shelter home. friends that. Mm -hmm. Yes, because it to tell feels that. like my mom <laughs> played both roles, mm -hmm. mom and dad. Mm -hmm. And dad was just that. He was just there. He was just there. Yeah. You know, he never gave me. You know, everybody knows your father is supposed to be your first true love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that feels like. Mm -hmm. So when I say it hinders me, it hinders my love life mm -hmm. it hinders my relationship with people you know things like that because you're supposed to have those models at home first mm -hmm. right to show you what love is mm -hmm. what it looks like what it feels like mm -hmm. when you're only getting it from one person who's overplaying the part mm -hmm. it's like i know what it feels like from 
a mother perspective, the motherly, the caring, the nurturing. Mm -hmm. But I can't say I know how it feels to be loved from a man, mm -hmm. even to this day. Yeah. I can't really say I truly know how it feels to be 100% love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Charlie, about to have me cry. It's okay, baby. It's home. okay. It's okay. But that's real talk shit. Yeah, that's yeah, the truth. That's yeah. real talk. A lot of us feel that way. Because mm -hmm. we some of us, like, like I said, like I said, some people have had fathers in the home mm -hmm. and still got daddy issues. And some there are some women out here who think that because their father was at home, they don't have daddy issues. Mm -hmm. But if he's just there and he's just a body, there there's no there's no relationship. You know, that's that that's that's tough. It is that's I mean, tough. People don't realize how bad it affects you. Yeah. And I mean, I'm proud to say I'm in therapy now. I mean, that was a little yes. it took me a while to get there to realize it, but mm -hmm. you can only help yourself when you're ready. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. You're doing a good job, Tony. Yeah. Bitch, you're doing a good job. Yeah. Bitch, you're doing a good job. Bitch, you're doing a good job. Yeah. Bitch, you're doing a good job. Yeah. Bitch, you're doing a good job. Yeah. <laughs> No, that's real talk. And those yes. tears, that's purging. Yes. Get yes. that shit out. Yes. Mm -hmm. Don't hold that shit in. Mm -hmm. Let that mm -hmm. shit out. But yes. like real talk, like it still affects you till you get older. Because like as Shanita said earlier, I suppressed a lot of my childhood. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't answer those questions because I don't know. I got mm -hmm. you. I, feel I know from a certain time period of my age mm -hmm. up until like, of course, my teenage years. Mm -hmm. I remember that perfectly. But I want to say before middle school, a little middle school, you know, probably like elementary through maybe seventh, eighth grade. Blur. Yeah. It's all a blur. Mm -hmm. I cannot recall too much of nothing because I suppressed so much. So much. Um, oh. Sorry. You got me over here. Too, I just feel like it sucks to be robbed of your childhood. Yes. Because you didn't ask for that shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? I was spoiled. Oh, I got everything I wanted. You know, the list goes on and on. But that doesn't make up like everything everybody else gets an experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel it all the time. I'm, I'm so grateful for all of you, though. I'm grateful to actually share this country. Yes. Mm -hmm. For those that's built Ooh, to, oh, to Lord, be able to have the experience to say, you know, <laughs> I don't know what it feels like to have that love that we were, quote unquote, supposed to have. The stereotypical, oh, it's supposed to start at home. You're supposed to have a two parent household. And, all of this is the American dream. But what if you don't have that? Yeah. You know? And, and exactly. when we realize that, it's okay not to be okay because you didn't have mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And when you do have it, it's like you need to not be so delusional to feel like that that's all you needed. Mm -hmm. You know, like, because mm -hmm. that is where you you saying you, it took you some time to get to therapy. And kudos to you because it yes. takes us yes. a time or two. It takes me, I'm yes. still trying to convince my mother to just have one session with me. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, because I feel like it will make all the, the world of a difference. But the, the things that I suppressed versus the things that I remember, the things that I remember is traumatic enough, yeah. you know? Yes. And when you get to a place where you, where you realize that I have to do something about how I feel as a person, you know, the person that they created, if, I don't, if I'm not feeling their love, how can I now feel complete? Yeah. And that's the self love, yes. self care. When you get to a place of loving yourself beyond the way your mother loves you, more than how your mother is showing that she loves you, more than how your father is showing that he shows you he loves you, you know, be the love that you actually want to receive from other people. Mm -hmm. That's the ultimate healing. So kudos to you. I'm so yes. grateful to share this space with you because it's not many people that can say, I didn't receive that love. I don't know what it feels like to have that first daddy daughter love, you know? My father left this earth without fixing our relationship and it wasn't until he was in the spiritual realm that I felt his love. Mm -hmm. And I felt like, you know, in the beginning, I was mad at him for dying. How you gonna leave here after right. not doing? Mm -hmm. Right. Or how you gonna be mad? I mean, how you gonna um, now die right. after this is the time we're supposed to be making it better. Right. But it took a lot of reflecting and accepting 
it's a lot that we have to accept. They didn't know. Yeah. They didn't know what to do that, with us that's as children. Key. That's the key. They right did here. the best they could. Even yep. if it wasn't the best, yep. it's the best that we received. Right? Yeah, you know what I'm exactly. saying? We got to work with what the hands that we was dealt. Right? Yeah. So make your experience the best because it was all that they had to give. Yeah. It wasn't what we deserved, no. But now with that, we have to give ourselves more. We have to give ourselves what we do deserve. Right? Yeah. Because now you now you know. That's what I'm saying. Once you once you can admit it, it's like when you know better, you do better. And and that thing is it's like and it's not easy because you're like, Well, I didn't ask for shit, but once you start to realize it's like we can't seek validation outside of ourselves from parents like marcus always say divorce the title like take away the fact that that's your mama take away the fact that that's your wife take away the fact that that's your sister or whoever your brother your uncle your father whoever and just look at them as a human being they went through stuff that made them the way they are they they are dealing with it the best way they can this one is i got a lady on this some some meme or not even meme a video on instagram that i tagged years ago saved it and she says when you start to realize that everybody's doing the best that they can you start to look at people a little differently because what you you then start to have a little bit of sympathy or empathy for them because it's like damn that's all you know how to do hmm. You don't know how to show up a different way. Mm -hmm. You're not equipped to show up a different way. I actually feel sorry for you. Mm -hmm. That part. That you don't know how to show up better. Mm -hmm. Somebody didn't show you or somebody mm -hmm. showed you that that's the best way. So I I, I, I totally get it. Because my, my father was in my life, but he wasn't doing what he was supposed to do. He could, but he, he also could barely take care of himself, right. let alone take care of me. But when, he, when I was with him, we were solid. It wasn't like, you know what I'm saying? But he... To be consistent and all that type of stuff, you know, and then your mama be like, You got more love for your father than you do for me. He don't even do what he's supposed to do. My mother never talked bad about my father like that. But as I got older, she was like, I'm just saying. I'm like, I feel you, mommy. Like, I <laughs> I don't mean it like that. Like, you know I love you, like for real. But I, I understood what she was saying. But you know, um, it's just it's just it's just one of those things where you just start to realize that they're human beings and they're doing the best they can and coping the way that the best way they know how to cope. You know what I'm saying? But when you start to realize that, but that's this is the thing. That's your power. Mm -hmm. That's your power. Because one thing you can't say is, I know how I, I don't want a nigga to be. Yeah. Right. You're not going to sit in my house yeah. and just sit there yeah. and right. just be a fucking body. Right. And I'm not going to have a relationship with you. Right. We're not doing that. You know what I'm saying? Like, and maybe maybe that was a strength that, you know, we need at the time. Because I, I, I totally feel you. Because I, I feel the same way. I'm like, am I codependent? I'm over here like, really like, damn Hold on, am I codependent? Like, I, I really need to dig into this. Do I do I need this? Do I am I seeking any type of validation outside of myself? Because I got somebody who will call me or text me or fuck me or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, am I am I trying? So I I, I totally understand because it's like uh, like I said, even even daddies that are in the house, like you said. But I mean, it could also even be not even just daddies. Yeah, like it can. Like, Hell like, yeah! I say that like okay, yeah, my mother was a. A single mother. My father was around, but he wasn't around. Mm -hmm. You know, but at the same time, my mother was not the the loving, mm -hmm. hugging, mm -hmm. nurturing. Yeah. She was hard on us. Mm -hmm. So I can feel like that hindered me in a way. Cause again, when I say I got tests, and like I don't know no other way, I don't know how else to be other than hard. It it really like, and I can't say that she probably was doing the best that she could, but she just wasn't that nurturing mother. She was in a household. She worked. She took care of us. She gave me what I wanted. She we had we never went without food. We never went out roofing out over our head. But at the same time, she was just. I mean, like even, we don't even have we have a decent relationship, but it's not the normal mother daughter relationship. And I think that weighs a lot on me in the way that I am because I'm like I love her, but at the same time, she's always. Yeah. Oh, got something. Yeah. To, as a kid, it's like, well, damn, I I did, no, did I ever do anything wrong? Right. Mm -hmm. What, what right. did I do? Yeah. Because yeah. 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 I was always, oh, listen, I was bad. I know. Mm -hmm. But you know what I'm saying? You but was tough, the, tough. You was built to be tough. Same, I was built to be tough, but at the same time, like she said, her right. dad was in the household, but you didn't feel that love. Yeah. And I think that's the relationship that me and my mother had. And I brought it up to that's her, you know, but she, I mean, like right now, we we butt heads all the time. With her and my sister kind of don't really have that kind of relationship. 
but me and her have always, and I can remember back as a kid, age seven, we have always had that relationship. You know, so basically, I didn't really have, I had a relationship with my father, but it was when he was around. Mm-hmm. But then I really didn't have that love, close in that relationship with my mother either. Right, right. So, mm-hmm. I feel you. Probably jack me up. No, you right. It, go, it definitely goes mm-hmm. both ways. Yeah, it does. Hell yeah. But, but here's the thing. You are not alone. Yeah. Right. You're not alone. But that also goes into your relationships. Yes. 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 I feel that. Sometimes, you know, I got to catch myself with my kids. My daughter, she's turning 18 years old. Jesus, I'm trying not to hurt. (laughs) You know, but I mean, if I catch myself sometimes being like my mother. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm on her and I'm saying stuff and I'll be like, all right, come back. Wait a minute. That wasn't nice. So I got to, you know what I'm saying, watch what I say because I know how that bothered me as a kid. Yeah. We were just having but a that, conversation we were. in the kitchen. We, we were. And I I feel like, how do you do? I mean, what can you do? Like, you don't know what your actions today are mm-hmm. going to render mm-hmm. in the child that you're raising. Because if you have multiple children, you can't raise them the same. Mm-hmm been younger when you had your first one and older when you had your you know your other kids so it's like i feel like where you are in your life Mm -hmm. can determine the type of raising that you do yeah you know and like what we're talking about here all of us being healed to be able to transfer that positivity and the warm and fuzzies and all the things that that particular child may need, but they may not need all the warm and fuzzies. Mm -hmm. So then you're giving them something that's not necessarily, but then they still end up saying, well, mom, you didn't do this when I was blah, 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 however many age, whatever, Mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, how do you pinpoint this thing? You know, I think it it was big for me to release expectations and obligations of people. Just mm-hmm. what, I, what, what comes with that title, right. what comes with the mother, what comes with the father, what comes with the brother, what comes with a son even. Mm-hmm. I've had to release what I feel like my son should act like. Mm-hmm. The actions or road my son should take. Because if it was up to me, he's going to be uh, um, a herpetologist. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, this is something he's been saying he wanted to be since he was three years old. Right. So how are we going to go off that track, son? Right. You know, mm-hmm. but allowing them to come into their own, mm-hmm. you know, I had to realize that's why I got to be 30 years old, not knowing what I wanted to do because I was always trying to live up to my grandparents' expectation or what my mother thought I should be doing or not having any other children because of how I would be looked at upon. So it's like releasing how they think you should even be. So your parents, you know, releasing what they, how they groomed you to be, releasing their not so good of a job on raising you and now taking that, not giving only warm and fuzzies because you didn't get warm and fuzzies. No, but asking your child, what is it that they need? Mm-hmm. They are growing up in a different time. They need us to show up differently. They are looking at us differently. My son told me something that was so profound. When I was little, I went everywhere you took me. And they're looking at you from a different lens because they're looking at you as a protector and they're going with you everywhere. He's like, but now that I'm older... I look at you from a different lens and it's, it, it allows me to ask, why is my mother making the decision, whether she, whether he's going with me or not? Right. Why is my mother choosing to allow this person to stay around longer mm-hmm. or treat her this way? Or right. why is my mother taking mm-hmm. on the responsibility of someone else? Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. They are they don't care about no daddy issues that you still holding on to. Right. You need to be able to be the mother so they're not growing up with mommy issues right. you know, in the future. Mm-hmm. So... I just really feel like releasing the expectations and obligations. I'm not, my son is not obligated to take trash out or do this or do that. No. What I expect you to do as a with your moral compass, I want you to be, grow up and want to say, I don't want this trash in my house. Right. Not right. because I'm you telling me, telling my son. Look at how you, you alchemize like, I'm, I'm not about to be the one that's telling you to take the trash out. Bro. Right. right. Like you should, you you should, should want to. Take you should trash not. Out. I, I like that, mama. That's, that's a good one. Right. You want to, you don't want to have to trash your house. You don't want to have a have company randomly in your bathroom is not clean. Right. Mm-hmm. So just allowing him to experience that. I haven't told him to clean up for like a month. Mm-hmm. And he, Mark and I have company. You have a company in this house. That floor ain't been vacuumed out there, and I'm not lifting a finger because I ain't having a company. I'm good. Right. My room clean. I'm good. Right. But that sparked something in him. Like okay. 
Right. Then you start just at least making sure the house straightened up, the common areas is good. Right. I'm not about to put an expectation on him or obligation on him because I don't want that on me from my mother. Right. Or, you know, right. those that right. look at me in a certain way. Right. That's good right there. Yeah. Because even at my son, he's 10, and I'm trying to do the whole chore situation. Oh, yeah. And he's like, well, am I getting paid for this? <laughs> And I'm like, dang, she knew you fucked up by even saying you're going to get chores and allowance to do. And I'm like, I shouldn't have to pay you to do stuff that you should already be doing. Right? But I like the way that you said, oh, you don't want it to be dirty in here. Then you need to take the trash Yeah, out. you be like, you need to brush your teeth. You think little girls want you to be in their face with your yellow teeth? Girls like boys that smell good. Okay, oh, they I don't want that. no stinky boys said, yeah. and don't just spread the clown. And right. don't, 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 no, right? Like, no, they be little boys. You gotta stay on them and stuff like that. So I, I like the way that you changed that yeah. around. I, mm -hmm. I just need to figure out how that works with the, a ten year old. <laughs> but I, and then what? I just be like, you know, I don't want my space to be dirty. So. I'm just gonna take the trash out. Like we'll deal with this life lesson later. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Choosing your battles. Yeah. Choosing your battles. Yeah. 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 You choose to have a battle about the trash being taken out when it's far more mental things that yes. he's trying to develop yes. and wrap his mind around. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree with that. And yeah. when we get to, I'm not gonna keep on talking about kids because I, I just. I love the way that I now allow children to teach me. Mm -hmm. We just allow them to do what they came here to do and mm -hmm. teach us the way we're supposed to be doing things mm -hmm. instead of being that obedient, you know, or parent or guardian all the time. Feel like we have to tell a child, don't do that. Stand a child's place, do this, do that. And just be open and listening to where they are leading you. Mm -hmm. Like that's the most beautiful way to learn and grow yeah. as a parent. Yeah. I was just going to say, just stay tapped in. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Um, my son and I, we talk, we do talk. My, and my son's not a talker. Mm -hmm. His father's not a talker. They very laid back, very chill, very reserved. But he talks to me. And I love it. Mm -hmm. But it's probably because, like I said, he got an expressive mama. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, he does come to me. He's like, mommy, high school? He's like, these girls. He's like, they something. I'm like, what they doing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, what they doing? I'm so excited that he's talking to me. So just kind of staying tapped in and asking questions. Yeah. Just to see what their little minds are. And as you develop, they're going to be developing too. And they're going to be paying attention. Yeah. Like you said, they're going to be like, why is she doing this? Or why is she doing that? Mm -hmm. And it'll start to click. Yeah. But but all you can do is what you can do. You know what I'm saying? And you never know. Something could They could experience something in life later on that may change how they may look at certain things. And then you have to show up for them differently in that way. Right. You know? So it's just, you know, just kind of going with it and staying, staying tapped in. <laughs> And when they get old enough to tell you, I don't like the way you handled that. I think you could have did that a little differently. I oh, think that shucks. Mm -hmm. How old is your son? 19. Yeah, how about I say? He sounds like he's almost grown. And I'm I'm so honored to be able to learn from him. No, and it's, it took me a minute to get to a place of looking at him as a friend, mm -hmm. you know, because this is my son. And yeah. I'm his, I've been his only parent since he's been five years old. His dad passed when he was five. So it's it's... It's hard for me to not really always be his mom, mm -hmm. right? But right. for him to be him, yep, all of him. Oh, I like I'm it. able to experience all of him outside of just being his mom. So he's just like, as my friend, he's like, you like, nah, mom. Mom, 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 mom really is trying. Mom, mom really is trying. Oh. You know, yeah. I get he get to play devil advocate yeah. sometimes, yeah. and he's allowed. I allow because they still have an innocence. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. life hasn't complete. I mean, your son is a little older, right, but still, right, right. life hasn't like. Just smack them yeah. across the face. Yeah. I'm telling you, that's a wake up call. When you're like 20 something and you get out there, and you realize the world don't give a fuck oh, about sure. your day. Yeah. They don't give a fuck yeah. about how you feel. They don't care. Mm -hmm. People gonna walk past. They was you. They will walk past you sitting on the curb crying, mm -hmm. and they won't say nothing. Kids don't. Really, that's a, that's a big wake up call when you when you get older or whatever. Yeah. So I, I I can appreciate you know what you're saying as far as him you know him growing up and just kind of being able to express himself to you as an adult mm -hmm. you know this is great ladies okay. anything else we want to touch on before we can go into the our last little you know session and or last question rather and then we can wrap up i think i already know we already know the answer to this question <laughs> and it's um do you think as black women we can heal ourselves so i think original question was do we do we think as black men we could heal ourselves. And I think it's because, you know, they're men and people tend to think that they don't know how to be emotionally intelligent. Well, 
we, we know the stereotype. Stereotypes are true, though, most of the time. But anyway, so we just flipped it. <laughs> so I do think that we have the ability, but um, the question was, to take a step further, was how? How do we heal ourselves? What do we do? What do we practice? You know, um, just kind of, you know, so that's that's kind of digging in a little bit on what we do to, to once we do find out these things, what are, what are we doing or are don't want to do to continue that that process? Well, I feel like <laughs> I can go. Okay, now, Tony, what you got? Um, because I am still on my healing journey. Um, I will say therapy has played a major part. Meditation has played a major part. Learning how to build boundaries. Mm. Mm. Yes, yes. Protective that's borders, okay? <laughs> yes. 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 Protective yes. borders, I like <laughs> that. <laughs> I like that right here, yes. what I'm saying. Yes, yes. honey, healthy boundaries. Yes. Yes. Mm. So I think mm. all of that, just in this journey, has helped me a lot with my healing. Um, healing from a lot of different things. Um, past trauma, daddy issues, relationship issues, hell, issues with family, friends, mm -hmm. you know, work, you know, just touching bases, everything, healing in every department. Um, it takes time. There's nothing you can rush through. You can't put no time limit on it and you can only begin your healing journey when you are ready. There are different ways you can approach your healing journey. I'm just sharing my personal way. Um, and also, I'm into the crystals and candles. <laughs> and, and, yeah, I'm doing all that. But for me, I'm going to curse your ass. <laughs> uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> but, real talk, like, um, I just had to get in tune with myself. Um, in a more spiritual way. Um, not saying I lost any lack of my faith or anything. That still plays a major part. But when you're, I guess when you're seeking peace, where you when you're looking for peace, when you're that's the direction you're headed to. Mm -hmm. You, how can I say this? It's like. You don't want anything to get in your way anymore. There are certain things that you would tolerate that you no longer have no interest in, like Absolutely. things that would hinder you, like relationships with relatives, friends, yes. family, mm -hmm. like people. people. Yeah, yeah, like people, sometimes period. Yes. you may fall out with the individual, but I feel like if that person was meant to be in your life, they're going to be there. You may have a mishap, a little hiccup, but if that individual is meant to be in your life, y'all gonna work that out. Yes. That's yeah. the truth. Regardless what the relationship is. Mm -hmm. Um so that's just just a sample of my my healing journey, how I started off. Yeah. And how what I'm going through. Yes. And I'm still healing. So I, it's it never stops. Yeah, it it's never really stops. It it's never like, stops. Yeah. Just like they say, you learn something new every day or try to learn something new every day. You it's, back it up you're yourself. taking steps mm -hmm. every day to become a better person, mm -hmm. a better version of you than you were the day uh -huh. before. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's what people realize. Like, I'm the guilty of always beating myself up mm -hmm. about, mm -hmm. oh, my God, why you do this? Why you ain't do it that way? Or mm -hmm. you shouldn't have did that. Or it's, it's always the afterthoughts of, you know, the overthinking. But now it's just like you got to... Write that shit away. I'm like, look, it is what it is. Yeah, As Lisa would says, I have the unbothered attitude. Maybe <laughs> like Omarion. Yeah, like seriously, yeah. like that's that's how I am now. It's like when I'm gaining peace, that's how I have to be. Mm -hmm. Like I have to have that unbothered attitude because I'm the person who used to always let every single thing get under my skin, mm -hmm. and I had to learn that every action doesn't deserve a reaction. Yeah, mm -hmm. and. I'm, it's, I'm, I'm still a work in progress. Like and, so, and listen, and silence, <laughs> silence is the yeah, okay. reaction, it's it's a reaction or progress. response. Yes. Yes. But it's the point that I know what needs to be done for me to get to where I want to be. Like, Absolutely. Was there a particular moment that like set you on this path, like a circumstance, like I'm no more? It did, because I just got to the point where I got so depressed, mm -hmm. and I didn't know which way to look. I was just over it. 
And I was just, I got to the point where I was like, I don't want to be here no more. Mm -hmm. And when I said those words out of my mouth, mm -hmm. out loud, mm -hmm. you I scared up. the shit out of myself. Yeah. I'm like, wait a minute now. Yeah. I'm yeah. still in the waiting line to have it. Yeah. That's an that instant, you know. <laughs> right. yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. So it's like, nah, baby, you need to get help. And so that's what made me really start therapy. And I've been in it for like going on two years. And I have not looked back. I don't regret it. It is one of the best things I have ever done. Yeah, so that's my. That's a part of my healing journey story. Good. Yeah. I love it, Tony. I love yeah. it. Um, just gonna add to that. I think that getting, like she, like Tony said, just getting to the point where enough is enough. And I was like, there's got to be something better than this. Like how I feel right now can't be it. And so it was like, okay, Chanel, what are you going to do with it? Are you just going to sit here and just kind of wallow? Or are you going to try to make some real changes? And I think that healing is a continual thing. Like it's, it, it's like either you're healing from this thing or you're healing from something else. So it's not anything where you can say, oh, I'm healed. Like, you know, maybe some people can I'm mm -hmm. not there. So mm -hmm. it's like every, <laughs> every every time that I think of, you know, something else that bothers me or something else that I feel like I could, could be handled differently, I'm like, okay, Chanel, you got to start this over again. And I am a huge journaler. Journaler. Good. Oh, yeah, that's that's great. Mm -hmm. um, but I like to journal. Yes. And I have journals from like 20 years ago that sometimes I'll like read over again just to see where I was then mm -hmm. help jog my memory about my earlier years as a an and adult. how you how far you've come yes mm -hmm. that too that's the best sometimes part. I feel like dang you was dealing with this back like, then. wait a minute like, now. okay so let's go back to the mm -hmm. home board and figure this out um so I I just think with that therapy is amazing anybody that's not in therapy y'all need to get on board because it's the best thing that you can do for yourself and I think when you can like address the things that's going on with yourself, then you can show up better for people that you <laughs> that you love, your kids, like what we talked about earlier. Like you can show up better. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm just I'm still on this journey. The Lord knows I had my days. Because I've been like, Mark, you know I just got saved again last week. <laughs> Why are you trying it? Right? But I feel like it's a constant, you know, and you need people. To kind of rub you to see like measure where you are how far you've come and if you don't have that then it's kind of like well what are you doing right right, right. and so i just feel like the next time i start dating again whenever that is hopefully i'll be able to use the tools that i've learned and it actually i've learned it yeah. it's not like a oh it's in you it's, like, it's, it's there you. somewhere it's like second mm -hmm. nature yes no i feel you so girl, that's that's, what's up. that's my, Good for you. My journey. Hell yeah. It's still continuing. No, nope. absolutely. <laughs> As we speak. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. So, Toby? I mean, you definitely got to recognize in order to start a healing journey, right? Yes, so, and admit you have a problem. That's yes. what I was asking. Like, what was yeah. That's the first step to recovery. Yes. And then you have a problem. Yeah. And then you got a problem. <laughs> or, you know, how am I responding to just anybody? What are my interactions like? Am I on the defense? It's just like, why are you acting that way? What is it? Mm -hmm. And for me, it was COVID okay. that set my black ass down mm -hmm. and made me sit inside I'm in the house. I'm by myself. Mm -hmm. You know what? Typically, I would be bothered about this drive to work. Or I'd be bothered about that coworker because I'm doing too much and y'all doing too much and y'all making me, I don't have to do all that. Mm -hmm. I don't have to do none of this, actually. And then once you kind of step back, you're like, I never had to do that either. And why did I allow that person to do that? Was I people pleasing there? Mm. Have I been people pleasing all this time? Mm. I thought I was making it peaceful then, but now all it's gotten me is an unsettled mind and mm -hmm. I'm overthinking. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. So this this whole COVID time, I've been like, yeah, we in the house. Mm -hmm. Okay. And just kind of making things better. At one point, I had a therapist and a life coach. Because mm -hmm. sometimes a therapist is kind of, mm -hmm. that life coach, mm -hmm. she's a black lady, mm -hmm. she's a single mom. 
She had a doctor, went to Grambling. I was like, uh, she'd be like, Hope, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> yes. You were supposed to do that. I'm like, Yeah, I like this. I need this yeah. more than like yeah. the therapist yeah. part. Yeah, I need yes. a hyper. Yes. 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 I like hyper. <laughs> no, I feel you, you on know, that. I feel you, you know, on but that. Yeah. recognizing. And then, and then taking the steps, and it's and it's been wonderful. You um, mentioned the word. You said uh, uh, releasing, and for me, it's been uh, unlearning. Mm-hmm. Unlearning, mm-hmm. mommy. You know, you had said I don't, I don't think that's true, mama. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to come at her in a respectful nature. Right. I still your mama, but it's like no, mom. Mm-hmm. Those not my beliefs. Yeah. Not that. Yeah. yeah. Not that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. But then being able to say, you know, maybe now. I'm not gonna go back and forth and tussle with my mom. She used to like to tussle with me. We like to tussle with each other. My mm-hmm. father said before he passed, like, if y'all don't get along, I mean, it's all, you know, it is what it is. But now it's like, hope oh, she older. Mm-hmm. She was living doing the civil rights movement. So you just need to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> that, the, the, you said it already. The best response is silence. Yeah. Ah, get me with the words I don't use. You like, you know what? I don't have anything to say. I'm out, white flag. Yeah. yeah. Especially, and when you a talker and mm-hmm. you ain't got nothing to say, oh, it is. Oh, honey, I hope you okay. We, yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure is. <laughs> I'm good. Because mm-hmm. if I had something to say, I would say it. Mm-hmm. How about I probably said it already right. a few times. Yes. But it was my eyes now. <laughs> yeah, right. How about that? Uh-huh. Yeah, that. Yes. Mm-hmm. I like it. Recognizing, unlearning. Mm-hmm. Yes. Journaling. Mm-hmm. Lisa. Yes. Just, I was going to say something similar to what she said. Just recognizing um, yourself because we so quick to blame things on other people and point fingers and once I sat back for me I sat back and realized I'm my own problem like if we realize this is how a person is or this is how the situation go and we're getting upset about it I'm like I'm my own problem because I already know mm-hmm. she pops off I already know he's an asshole mm-hmm. so why am I entertaining all of this mm-hmm. so I start saying to myself um, I'm thinking crazy, but I but this is what I say to myself every time I get upset or I start to get outside my courage. I'm be like, Lisa, you bigger than this fucking situation, mm-hmm. and I'm like, I have control of my own actions. I fucking tripping. Mm-hmm. Like I'm bigger than any situation I'm facing, mm-hmm. and I'm like, God is in control, not these individuals or my thoughts or because sometimes I'll start to come up with these conclusions in my head or what somebody thinking or why you looking at me this way or what did you heal or you believe in everything you heal or something and I'm just like chill out pause quick yeah all this killing people all around me um I just say I have to love myself more than the experience so that's my thing. Just love myself, whatever I'm experiencing. Love myself more than what I'm experiencing. I'm bigger than anything I'm experiencing. Right. And I have a purpose. And right. I don't want these little people in the world. Mm-hmm. And they're watching. They're, they're mimicking. They call me out all the time. <laughs> so. Yes. Yes. So I put myself to step back. Don't make everything so serious i think a lot of times we make a lot of things more serious than what they need to be yeah it's just like who gives a damn that you almost got put out yeah Mm -hmm. you could have you have somewhere to go Mm -hmm. who gives a damn that you can't pay whatever bill i still have my house Mm -hmm. i don't need that Mm -hmm. and i'm in um been a bacon over 20 something years. So my biggest thing is you know, like my finances. Mm-hmm. Um, so key thing to me is like, I can't go past 30 days on nothing because I don't want nothing to hit my credit. Mm-hmm. And I got a list of all my debts and when do the fees start kicking in? So that's what drives me crazy and that's what gets me going. So I think it's just knowing what what are those things that get you going? Right. Mm-hmm. Or what sets you off? And just taking note of what it is, how you can get it under control. Because if you don't get it under control, you are your worst enemy. You're battling yourself. So just realizing what it is that sets you off 
why is it setting you off? Why are you allowing it to set you off mm-hmm. and know how to control it when it does come in play? Right. Mm-hmm. So I feel you. Yes. That's right. So for me, I would have to answer the question. Absolutely, yes, we can heal ourselves. Mm-hmm. I am a prime example of one who's not only healed myself physically of things or ailments that doctors couldn't even diagnose, mm-hmm. but spiritually, emotionally, um, psychologically. You know, I was just in the same space where I said, I don't want to be here no more. Mm-hmm. And because I'm the type of person that I am, the lioness in me that... <laughs> just had to see it through. I was preparing everybody around me. Y'all better not put me in a box. You better, I wanna be cremated, son. You can put me in whatever waters you want. I was making everybody comfortable with the fact that I didn't wanna be here anymore. And not only was it my depression, I was just spewing out on everybody else, but because I was not, I refused to see a therapist. You know, I wasn't consistent with seeing someone outside of my family, but I had to really, like you said, you become your own worst enemy. And it didn't dawn on me that I was now creating this um, darkness around me. And I'm such this light being. And I came to the point of, I'm healed. What is going on? I'm healed. I've done all of this. I'm a sacred woman. I'm a a, a holistic practitioner. I'm an herbalist. I've done all of that work. I am healed. So I don't have to go through anything else. And then those memories came. Mm -hmm. And I, it became up to a point. That's why I had to realize, oh, it's going to keep on happening. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're going to keep on waking up. Oh, you're going to keep on seeing things for what they are, people for who they are. Mm-hmm. And this healing journey never ran. Never. Yeah. So this was, it was so important for me to have this conversation with ladies. I like love I, I mm-hmm. love the fact that they did it with the man. Oh, my goodness. It just gave me chills. Yes. Guys. It was a couch, two couches full of men. I it loved I was so proud of them. Yeah. About, oh, I was being so proud of them. Until they healed themselves, but ladies. Girl. Oh, my God. Like the creators and the goddesses that we are. The power that we have. We are nothing. They are nothing. This dwelling, nothing is nothing if we're not okay. Hey, you know, if we're not okay, if our wounds are not in alignment, and you can definitely heal yourself. The name of my business is Overcome Adversity and Become a Better You. Oh, Abby, not your healing. And every day is, I am Oh, Abby. I'm the epiphany of, epitome That's of right. Oh, Abby. And to share with anybody else that, yes, you can overcome adversity and become a better you. And here's how. Yes. Like, whatever it is that you're going through, whatever obstacle, whatever trauma, you can overcome it. Yes. There yes. is there is something better for you to see, something more uh, that life has to offer you. Right. So, if y'all didn't know, y'all can heal yourselves. And I hope by the end of this series that we all get into a place where we can accept that for us move in a direction where we were um becoming the women that we want to attract the reflection of because yes. that's how i am living my life at this point yes. i'm not even saying that i'm single i release titles and things like that it's like if i'm entertaining you i feel you mm-hmm. you know but i want to become who i want to attract right yes. my money right. ain't looking like what i want to attract just yet right so i'm good i right. need to be able to build my account to work because i need to be able to have somebody that is reciprocal exactly right. you know? right. so if we're exactly if we're one if we want to have a reflection who are you and you right. need to take that inventory of yourself mm-hmm. yep. you're not worthy of somebody coming to drop all these bags on you if you're not ready to drop a bag on a man that's deserving of it Go ahead, stand your lane, sis. Keep right. on healing. Yep. Right. So that's where I am. Yeah, I love, love it. I love it so, good. Yes. so, so much, yes. y'all. Yes. Oh my God, it's so refreshing. It is. I heard meditation. I heard journaling. I, I, so I, I do both of those. Meditation is something that um, I wasn't doing as much as I wanted to, but I started to realize that every time I meditated, a certain person would reach out to me. And I was like, what is this about? And then I had a challenge. I did it for seven days, but I also added grounding to it. So I started doing meditation, like sitting in the yard, like literally going outside, putting my ass in the grass yeah. and just giving myself, I'm just saying, all of us are psychic. Mm-hmm. All of us have intuition. Yes. Mm-hmm. A lot of times it's just trusting yeah. your intuition. Yeah. Yeah. And what happens is we let things outside of us mm-hmm. change how we, what, what, mm-hmm. what, what the universe and what the divine is telling us. Yeah. And when we sit for a second, sometimes I'm telling y'all, sometimes just take 60 seconds. We don't even give ourselves Mm -hmm. 60 seconds to breathe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To breathe. If you ain't got no air, 
you ain't here. Yes. Right. If you're not breathing, you're not living. So if you can't take 60 seconds to yourself to just breathe, you we doing it wrong. Yep. We doing, doing it wrong. Service. Exactly. Yes. So I challenge all of us on, over the next seven days until we meet again mm -hmm. to take 60 seconds. You know, it might the first two or three days might be a little tough, but I mean, literally sit there with your breath for 60 seconds. That's one minute. We got 24 hours in the day. Just take 60 seconds for the next seven days. And I promise you, after day two or three, you're going to want to stretch it a little bit more. You're like, you know, I like this. Hold on. Let me sit here for about five minutes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because what it does, it just allows you to calm yourself. Mm -hmm. So when, when the world comes at you, you're not responding from that ego. You're not responding from that fear. You're not responding from that protection. Yeah. It's like, I got this. Like you said, I can change. I can switch this whole game up because I'm bigger than this. Mm -hmm. I can always show up differently because I want to. Because yeah. I want to. So I ain't gonna preach, but <laughs> I do, I do, I do really, you know, when it comes to certain practices, I'm I'm all about it. And I think that that release is what is what we need. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes just sitting with your breath. If your mind wanders, it's okay. Don't be so hard on yourself. Let's know that we're so hard on ourselves. It's just go, 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 go. Don't stop. We're in survival mode. All we black women. Get it right. We're in survival mode all the time. Get over it. Fuck that. Fuck that. 2020 definitely changed me too. When I said when I was able to sit in the house, I said, you can do exactly what you want to do. You can't you can't say you don't have time. I started getting my ass up. I did my prayer. Prayer, meditation, went outside, exercised for an hour, came back in the house, took a shower. Every time I did that, y'all, I just felt more and more peace, more and more peace. So it made me just, I just ran after it. Now it's like, oh no, I'm attracting peace now. Like I know exactly where I need to be going to attract. I want to be the vibration. I want to, yes. I, and I've always been that person. I will say, I feel like I've always kind of put good things out there and they started to catch up, thank God. But I want to continue that for myself. Because I've been so selfless my whole life. Now it's like, not to be selfish, but just to be a little more in tune with what I need. Right. So I'm in receive mode. Yeah. And if you're not giving me what I need or you're not adding to my peace mm -hmm. or you're not expanding my soul, mm -hmm. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep yeah. going this way regardless. Yeah. But yeah. I'm, if, I, if you can't do it, I'm going to go do it for myself. That's it. That's, that's all. I, um... <laughs> I was writing a book. Oh, well. anyway. Yes, um, yes, yes. Father God. One, of the <laughs> one of the chapters was pretty much about like the overflow is for y'all. And just mm -hmm. talking about like describing a cup. Yeah. And y'all been, people been dipping into my cup. Mm -hmm. And I say they been, but I've been allowing it, right? Mm -hmm. So now I'm like, oh no, that cup ain't never going to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The slosh slosh over there on the side, yeah, on the sauce. So that's for y'all. <laughs> Overflow's for y'all. Anything else in there, I, I almost have to be selfish for self now. Yes. I'm still going to to give and do, but no, no, no. First priority is you. Yeah. yeah. And now that you've done that, you put your auction mask on yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Now I can see <laughs> Now you're exactly. kicking. They tell you put it on your face before you put it on your feet. Yes. Right? Yes. That yes. part. Yes. So, no. That's what's up. That's it. That's all. That's what's right. up. And I felt like that. I will say, recently, I've had to step up my spiritual practices because I ran into a situation where I felt like I was given from my overflow. Mm -hmm. And when that overflow was cut off, I said, you will not give it. You will not give nothing else. Mm -hmm. yes. Nothing else. Your cup is for you. Yeah. You're not my, I, at this, oops, my overflow. If my overflow is gone, my cup is dry. Yeah. Yeah. My cup is dry. I can't pour nothing in. Nope. So let me just keep going so I can get overflow. Then I can give again. Mm -hmm. But right now, I'm in receive mode. You gonna you filling up my cup? Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So not as a withdrawal. Exactly. You make a withdrawal. You got to go. Yeah. That's and that's 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 that's, 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 that's real talk. Yes, ladies. So we gonna y'all know it's gonna get deeper. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know what I'm saying. It's gonna get deeper. But this was fantastic. I appreciate y'all so so very much. I pray you pray to have a good sleep tonight. You know what I'm saying? After just letting shit out. You know what I'm saying? Because listen, it's better out and in. That's for damn sure. We inhale love. We exhale bullshit. Okay. Yeah, 60 seconds for the next seven days. 60 seconds. You are worth it. You are worth 24 hours of breathing for real, for real. But 60 seconds, next seven days, okay?
All right. Yeah, let's do it. I, I recommend the morning time, but you can do it in the shower. Like I say, see, you deserve a minute to your fucking self to just fucking breathe. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck that. All right, Nick. Oh, we got food. I'm excited. I need another drink. Okay, we're gonna hit this three three. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ladies, thank y'all so much. That was good. That was.